Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video would be about Databricks SQL alerts. Let's say that you have business data or business processes that you want to monitor and you want to receive notifications whenever the reported values fall outside of the expected range based on the conditions that you provided, of course. You can use Databricks SQL alerts for this purpose. In this video, we are going to see how to enable and trigger Databricks alerts to evaluate queries, conditions and send notifications. You can also set up a scheduler and multiple destinations and you can also access your alert history to see the results of the past alert evaluations. But enough talking, let's get down to business. Okay guys, so here we have Databricks documentation about Databricks SQL alerts. You can read more information about SQL alerts here on this page. We are going to follow the example they have because it's pretty convenient. And here they provide a select statement. We select the pickup daytime and we sum the fair amount as amount from this sample dataset, right? So if you copy this query here, copy this query, and then go back to your Databricks environment and click on the queries here and then create on create query. We are going to copy and paste the query that we got from the documentation and run it. So let's run the query and see the results. We are going to use the server starter warehouse, which is important because when we save this query here, so we'll click on save, and it's going to use the same compute when in the alert, when we create the alert. So alert demo and click on save. So here we save this query as alert demo and we're using the serverless starter warehouse, which is very, very important because every time that we use alert, it's going to use the same compute. Now, if we want to create an alert, as you can see, we have the date column and the amount column. And we perform a sum here in aggregation. This is important, you will see why. So click on alert, create a new alert here. Alert, uh, alert demo. And then select the query that you created, alert demo. And here, as you can see under trigger condition, you have, you can select the column that you want to apply the condition and here we have the date column and the amount column. Now based on the example what they have here we are going to use select the amount column, the aggregation, sum, the amount and the static value has to be greater than 4000. So let's do the same select the amount column, select the aggregation here and then the greater than 4k, right? And then you have other options. When alert is triggered, send notification just once until back to normal, or each time alert is evalu evaluated or at most every. Or when alert returns back to normal, you can send notification, but we don't need it. Now the template, this is how, what uh, you can customize the template of your message in your notification. So let's say alert body. And here you can provide the message that you want to receive in the notification. It has a formatting guide which leads back to the example. And let's see, you see here it when we use custom template we have all those built-in template variables that we can use and example subject for instance could be alert alert name change status to alert status so if we copy that let's copy this here and paste it to our body and then you can click on preview and see actually the results of how it will be displayed to the notifica notification and here we have alert alert demo change status to triggered Okay, and then we can create an alert, right? So we create an alert and now we have to set up the schedule. As you can see, the status is unknown because 
we haven't uh, run the evaluation we don't know the value yet but first add, we can add the scheduler run every hour or so you can use also cron syntax if you want and you can have destinations now in the destinations let's go back to our click on your account name and then click on settings and under notifications click on notification destinations manage and then you can add in the destination you can add we have multiple uh, choices here you can have email slack webhook pager duty microsoft teams let's say you we use email you provide test demo and then email address i have already done that so i have uh, my email here let's go back to our alerts basically and here we can add in the scheduler and then destinations you can add your re uh, your destination receiver you can have multiple destinations of course click on create and you will see here we set up the scheduler and the destinations now the status is unknown if you want to refresh and see what we get back from this query here from the query that we have so let's click on refresh and it will uh, see the status changed to trigger right because the amount the sum amount is greater than 4k so this will send notification now you can also use here the button run once if you want and also let's uh, actually edit this alert this alert here what i wanted to show you here is that in the alert body if you use one of those query result value for example or query result rows or query result columns you will see that if you have already an aggregation in your original query you will get this warning the original query result pre-aggregated will not be shown in alert custom body with parameters query result value when there is an aggregation on an alert so if you click on preview here you will see the value is unknown and in the documentation as they say if you scroll down it says an aggregation on an alert works by modifying the original sql query and it the alert wraps the original query in a common table expression and performs a wrapping aggregation query on it to aggregate the query result so for example here this select one as column name will be used with q as uh, we are going to use the with close here and then wrap it up with a, an aggregation so this means that the original query result cannot be shown in an alert custom body for parameters such as query result rows or query result columns whenever there is an aggregation on the alert so if you want the results of the query you can go back to your query and and here what you can do is actually remove the date and only keep the sum of fair amount as amount right that's it we don't use we don't need to buy click on save and here now if we want that it's going to retrieve the aggregate amount right the same amount that we had before now if we go into alerts let's go into alerts click on edit and here click on your query again to reset the uh, update the query and then here we have value we have only one column right we have only value and then first row instead of sum used first row because we have already performed the aggregation the operation greater than 4000 and the status is still unknown but if you click on uh, the preview here you will see again we get the same amount without using the sum aggregation here and is greater than the threshold now if we change this alert status to query result value and click on preview you will see that we uh, we, we are going to send the evaluation the result of the query right so the amount of the query 
but if he only this happens if he only used uh, first row so we, you don't use aggregations for example if you use sum on top of the sum of the original query you will get this um, warning but if you want to send the results of the evaluation you can do it this way and then you can save the changes and also trigger it again one last thing to notice here is that the scheduler here is different than the scheduler that you have if you have on the query so here you can see we have a, also a scheduler you can add so these schedulers are separate this is it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something useful if you like the video please click the like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment and i will see you in the next one thank you